Hello everyone, and welcome back to my tutorial campaign in Realistic Progression Zero, the campaign mod for the Realism Overhaul Suite of Realism Mods in Kerbal Space Program. Uh, we are coming up on quite an interesting event. Today we're going to try to perform a dress rehearsal of our moon landing. Uh, we've already performed the first half of the dress rehearsal, which was the crewed orbital operations and docking between the uh, retriever lander and the Labrador Command and Service Module. So now we are going to go ahead. Uh, first we'll deal with, with Dove-2's arrival. I don't think we'll actually gain any new science from it. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and launch Labrador Retriever 3, which is sending an uncrewed retriever out to the moon, and it will land on the moon. And man, I hope I don't screw this up. And broadly, the eternal words of Alan Shepard. Uh, slightly sanitized, of course. So, let's go ahead and go to Dove 2. Somewhere down here. Dove 2. Now, tragically, I don't think we'll actually get any more science out of this mission because we're not going to... See, we've aligned our orbital trajectory such that we can hope for um, you know if Titan were there uh, but it's not going to be there I'm also not going to hit Iapetus so yeah we will not get any kind of flybys from this mission um, the next time I'm here, I will be using Principia, everything will be properly tilted, All everything will be wonderful. Um, so, yeah, we're over the north equatorial bands, our inclination is, we're gonna, our result inclination is low enough that, you know, we're still gonna be over these equatorial bands, we're not gonna be anywhere near Titan. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and warp to here, because we're not actually gonna We can see whether we get close to, to any of these moons. I, I really don't think we will. Spinny, 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 spinny. Um, all right, so... I don't think we can even see Enceladus from here. see Enceladus from here? I don't... Th well, my eyes aren't good enough to see it, that's for sure. Um... Yeah, I don't see it. Oh, well. Let's move a bit closer. OK. 
get as close as possible. We'll pa we should pass more or less right over Enceladus. still a bit a bit out all right now we're more or less right over it let's take a look can we see it um okay that's us aligned now let's turn a bit away, and yeah, I can't see it. Uh, it may just be that it's too dark, or it may just be that I don't have the vision for it. Maybe somebody watching the video later can see it, but I can't see anything. So that's a shame. Um, so, so much for seeing a moon of Saturn. Now let's see how close Titan is. Um, we're also, we're fairly close to the plane of all these things. Alright. So let's see what happens here. We'll whip around Saturn. And... No. Uh, that's not going to be near enough to us when we get there. I don't think. Nope. Just for the sake of argument, let's flip around and see if we can see Rhea. Just down here somewhere, I think. Yeah, I can't see it. And the irony is that we, you know, we do have sunlight pointing this direction, so it's, you know. Yeah, all right, so we're too far away to see that. We would need to be able to zoom in somehow, which I guess I could do with the focal distance, but not enough for the actual. And we're far away from where Titan is. All right, so that was kind of a flop. Um, So, so much, sadly, so much for this probe. Now let's look at its trajectory post departure. It, um, okay, it's got quite a gravity assist. It's going to go hooking out of Saturn quite quickly and going to come down to a periapsis, a perihelion. Blech. Sorry, so you're going to come down to a perihelion not that far from Mars's orbital altitude. Um, but an aphelion well outside Uranus's orbital altitude. So the power of the gravity assist. But that is not really relevant to our existence. So we're going to go ahead and uh, not make it take up dish time as well. So, oh well. That was kind of a bust. So, we'll go back to the Space Center. And we'll get... Um, hmm? Come on. Okay, now 
we're back to the Space Center. Now let's go ahead and warp until this is done. Oh, how are we doing on tech? Electronics is still a ways off. All right. Well, for this we definitely need our high-end pad. Ah, and also we want to upgrade this. Pad 4. No, that's PARD 4. PARD is a space relevant term, but it's not the right one. Uh, and we want to upgrade this to the next tier. Alright, so we'll have two tier 3 pads and two tier 2 pads. Let's roll this out to pad 1. Meanwhile, I just want to check what's in electronics that we're about to get. Ah, uh, the anomaly scanner, the multispectral scanner, that gives us biomes. That is going to give us some more science. Accelerometer, which RP0 doesn't support yet. And then things that are not relevant to our existence because RP0 doesn't support them yet. All right. Very well. So, um, that's cool. Let's go ahead and warp to the rollout. Okay, and so before I do that, actually, I'm going to see how we're looking for our lunar window because it would be nice if... I don't think we have to worry about boil-off. We really um, brought a lot of propellant. All right, so actually, I think we want to wait a day, a day or two, because we don't want to have a full have a full go around. All right, so that will have a minor coast period. It's also because we wanted to set up a proper transfer. Um, although with this we're less worried because we don't have to set up a true free return. We just need to, we, we can set up a free return where we accept either a high perigee or a subsurface perigee. We don't have to perfectly tune the free return. All right, so here we go. Cross your fingers. Uh, nobody bored. And up we go. Now, as I've learned in the past, I need to bring up the debug toolbar and turn on hack gravity during loading so that it doesn't destroy the pad. Uh, I am nowhere near the masses of craft that that Bob Fitch was dealing with. Uh, I guess what I could have done is just changed the multipliers in physics CFG, but then, you know, when things properly fell on the pad and the pad exploded, it should still explode. The point is that um, we don't want to explode when it's not supposed to explode. And boom. Watch everything shake when that happens. Unhack gravity. Ah, interesting. That took us out of pre-launch. We shook enough that it took us out of pre-launch. All right, well, um, that's less than awesome, but we will, we will survive. Um, it just means that our mission elapse time will be wrong. Yes, we're about 12 hours away from the window which means we'll have a second round of the um, fun of this.
watch that mission elapsed time go skyrocket. All right, so I have to hack gravity again when we come off rails. Everything's looking good. We have engine ignition. And up we go. Oops, minus 29. There we are. Roll program. I realized that I could probably make things look a little better if I used ambient light adjustment, but it just feels so wrong to me if we're in a pitch black night and suddenly you can see everything clearly. I, I much prefer the sense of realism of no it really being that dark. Very, very low liftoff thrust to weight ratio, that's for sure. Uh, this got unchecked again. Why did it get unchecked? So annoying. And there's, there's the coast. Alright. Oh, crap. Is this, oh, this is set totally wrong, isn't it? Huh. Great. We started our turn too early, and the numbers weren't right. Well, it's good we have lots of excess capacity on this thing. Because our 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 turn shape has been way out of whack. I should have verified that first. All right, well, happily we did not have a very high max Q, so I'm going to take manual control for a bit, pitch up even more above prograde. We will build up steering losses doing this, but I feel it's worth the cost. Looks like a proper rocket. It really, really does. Nice tall first stage, nice tall second stage payload fairing. Looks a little weird with the extra tall payload fairing, but it's okay. Let's also move this back over to where it should be, more or less.
and come back this direction. Okay, first stage jettison and ullage, and second stage ignition. We have good ignition on the J2s. Let's pitch up, because we're going to have to stretch out these existing two minutes to apogee quite a ways. Okay, and ah, we can jettison our payload fairing earlier, and that will save us some extra delta V. I think I want to pitch up a little bit more than that. Okay. And there it goes. Ever so slowly. down a little bit, I think. Don't need to be pitched quite that high. We do have a six minute burn time ahead of us. I find it quite humorous how closely the launch profile of this launch vehicle mirrors that of Saturn V, despite being rather smaller. Now, it is October, which means I think that uh we will get sunlight before super long. We're launching into sunlight. Okay, Apogee's rising. Everything's looking okay to me. Inclination decreasing, relative inclination decreasing. I think we've come a little too far south, probably. Let's get these orbits aligned. Yeah, we're, we're, I think we're south of that. their inclination much faster. I definitely think we traveled too south too too far south. Pitch up a little bit more now. Okay, and now we'll just watch that descending node draw closer and closer and closer to us. Ah, we are bang on, actually. Point oh oh three, which is point oh three, which is close enough for I think what we want.
All right, that looks that looks decent. Okay, we're about to pass first apogee. Looks like almost made it up into lightness. coast far behind us. a very gradual trip to orbit. Very gradual. Okay, let's pitch down some. I mean, we could go for a higher park parking orbit, but uh, we could also just start falling down again and not build up so many steering losses. Okay, we've fallen past Apogee. We'll start to sink our way down. Let me just verify that the RCS on this stage... Where are we? verify that this RCS is in fact disabled. Yes, good. Excellent. Looks like we went high anyway. Okay, now RCS to on, stage, and ignite the RL10s. Good light on them. Let's pitch up. And by the power of Hydrolox, we will achieve orbit. And ah, there's just the little faintest bits of sunrise. Okay, we're up to 100 meters per second. Sync right. Okay, let's come right a little bit more. Reduce that. All right.
pitch up a little bit more. So... Yeah, we've essentially... What we've done with this launch vehicle is we have somewhere between an S1B stage and the Saturn C3's 2F1 first stage. Uh, the second stage is very like their original plans for the uh, S3 stage, two J2s, just stretched because it's a J2S. And this stage is very like a stretched Saturn S4 stage with six RL10s. They have rather higher thrust and higher specific impulse than the original S4's um, RL10s. So we're getting rather better performance out of it, but it's basically an S4 stage. Uh, although we're using four Agena guidance units rather than the Saturn instrument unit on it. We left the Saturn instrument unit on the second stage. That lowers our stage dry mass and it lowers the electricity used coasting. Whoa, all right. on circularization. Close enough. All right. RCS backed on to damp out the rotation. Now let's set up for our transfer. We want a Holman transfer to target. Let's create that node and uh, right. So we want to add more delta V. We want to move it back in time. That's about right. Let's go to 10 seconds. Move it a bit forward in time. We want to be nice and tight. does not loop us around correctly. Oh god, it's also um, right about when we have to start burning. So, very well. We'll just go with... There. That's a very low periceline. That is an acceptable periceline. All right, so we're actually right about at the node. So let's orient, ullage, and fire. like we fired a little late. Ah, that number is of course lying. We don't have even five minutes of burn time in us. 
and we're only using 3182 out of the 3600. So, yeah. Uh, let's also extend the antennas just to make sure we don't lose connection at any time. And, yes, complete this translunar injection burn. We will have to fine tune it with RCS because the burn is long enough that um, we can't get the accuracy we need. But what we really care about is the periceline. We don't much care about the return. Um, so that's all that matters. Now, these delta V numbers are larger than they would be otherwise because we, we're lacking 200 kilograms of crew. Uh, I probably should have I maybe should have put 200 kilograms of ballast in, but um, that's okay. It's okay. If we have if we have less than 100 meters per second remaining at landing, then I'll have done something very wrong. Don't need RCS on. We can let the RL-10s provide attitude control. Yep, and once, once we get to burn out on that, we can go ahead and extend the solar wings. And that is a fairly epic sight.